So if you're a beginner and you want to become a software engineer and a developer and you want to able to land your first job as soon as possible, then this video is for you. So in this particular video, I'm going to go through all the fundamentals and step by step on how you can become a software engineer from knowing nothing to becoming a software engineer and being able to land your first developer job. And yes, you won't need a computer science degree. So the first step for you is actually to focus and be able to find the perfect software field. So at first, this could be a little bit intimidating and you kind of find like feel you're lost in this huge world with many, many fields. But you want to do some research and you want to wisely choose that you feel that you want to work on and become a software developer on that particular field. From web development like front end or back end to mobile development and working on native apps into something like a cloud architect or maybe you want to go with data science and have machine learning and work with those kind of stuff. It all depends on what you like, your passion and what are your plans for the future and the plans for your dream job. So I know from my opinion, web development and mobile development is doing really good like these couple of last years and you can find tons and tons of jobs and you can find a lot of opportunities if you just learn one of these. The second step is actually learning to code. So after you're picking up your right field and do some research and you say, oh, I want to become a web developer. So the next big thing or the next hard thing for you is actually to learn to code. I know first it's going to seem a little bit intimidating because, oh, you're a beginner, you know nothing about programming, you know nothing about this coding word and how stuff actually gets built and how this software stuff actually works. But don't worry, all you need to do is actually go to roadmap.sh, which is a pretty awesome website that gives you plenty of roadmaps depending on your field. So for example, let's say you picked up front end development. As you see here on the roadmaps, you can clearly see, oh, this is how you become a front end developer. And these are the things that you need to learn in order to become a web developer or a front end developer in particular. So you want to know something like the internet, how DNS works, how domain name works. You want to go with like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and actually grasp on these particular topics. Also gives you like best frameworks for you to learn nowadays and what are the hot frameworks in order to land your job and much, much more to follow. And actually without just feeling lost or feeling you can't actually know exactly where you're going, these roadmaps particularly are going to give you a path to follow and learn every single technology you're going to need throughout your career. There's also plenty of free resources out there for you to learn coding and development from scratch. So for example, you can go to like a GitHub repository that has plenty of courses or one of the awesome projects that I really like, which is an open source website sort of GitHub repo called the Odin project that has like baby steps for you to get started into like web development and how you're going to get started. It gives you everything from scratch and like what you need to do in order to become a web developer. Also another perfect place, actually just YouTube videos and searching what you want on YouTube. And it's going to give you plenty of awesome videos and instructors talking about different topics and different fields. Or actually there's a really awesome, nice YouTube channel that's going to give you be able to learn computer science from the Harvard University itself, which is called the CS50. Even it's like has a YouTube channel, it has plenty of playlists you can learn from, and they are super reliable and super super in depth. On the other hand, if you want to like a little bit more better tutorials, obviously there's a plenty of paid courses and boot camps and tutorials out there. The third step is actually learning data structures and algorithms. I know this might feel a little bit intimidating when you first hear the word data structures and algorithms, but believe me, they are super important for you, whether you want to like land your first job and they are important for your interview process or next, when you're actually working on big projects and trying to solve huge or big problems, they're going to play a major, major role in your career. So I really advise you guys go ahead and learn those data structures and algorithms. There's a plenty of website out there. For example, there is a repository from GitHub that is free, has plenty of algorithms that is like on every single language from JavaScript, Python, or Java, or plenty of more programming languages. Or there is actually another really awesome website that allows you to visualize those algorithms and actually gives you a more understanding of how the algorithm works behind the scenes. And you can easily better understand the concepts by just visualizing those algorithms and see like link lists, or maybe arrays, or maybe bubble sorting, or searching. It's going to be super helpful for you. The fourth step actually is actually picking the right framework for you and learning because nowadays there's tons and tons of frameworks out there from frameworks libraries that has actually pretty decent features. Each one has its own set of features and set of pros and cons. But what you exactly want to focus on is actually how hot the framework going to be choosing and how well and what is actually the job market for that particular framework. So for instance, if we take, for example, React is right now is actually the most hottest framework in the web development or front end development field. And as you see, obviously reacts, you're going to find plenty of plenty of jobs or plenty of job openings and like opportunities for you, whether when you learn reacts, you're going to be able to learn your job 
much, much easier compared to if you learn something else. Or maybe if you go from mobile developments, you see Flutter is actually taking the lead among like React Native or Kotlin for native developments. So you need to do your research wisely, in particular, the field that you're going to be working on and choose wisely the framework or library you're going to be professional at and actually working with. The fifth step, which is building more and more projects. And it doesn't really matter if those projects are good or bad, because practice is your key to success pretty much on any field you want to work on. So the more you practice, the more projects you create and work with and ups and downs you go through, the better you're going to become at like development and the better you become at your field, and the better you become you know, like a problem solver in the first place and programmer and, and good with code and writing clean and good code. And yes, you want to build everything that you can put your hands on from to do apps to calculators to simple web applications or HTML pages or building your Netflix clone or a simple proxy server, maybe Python, Node.js server, wherever you can put your hands on is pretty good for you. Now for the sixth step is actually creating your professional portfolio. And this is actually pretty weird because I find a lot of developers, especially newbie developers that tend to blindly ignore those portfolios and they never make it or create their own portfolio before they submit for a job, which is a pretty bad mistake because how am I as an employer going to be able to know, oh, that's your developer, your experienced developer, and that's your like a real human being and that you're not like a fake AI or a fake robot randomly on the internet. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because you want to make your portfolio to show case the employer that you are capable of doing this kind of stuff, upload the projects that you worked on in that portfolio. So let's start with like a GitHub readme, you know, put everything in there, your personal projects, your hobbies, what you worked on, your experience, you have any, and you want to make it as good as possible. I want to put like some real nice photo of you or a picture of you and that, that you look professional some, and capable of handling that kind of jobs and you're good in your field. Or what is actually better is actually taking that and creating your own custom portfolio and having a domain with your name and creating like a website from scratch using like Next.js, React. Literally, there's plenty of platforms out there that allows you to create a portfolio with zero effort. And yes, LinkedIn is essential for you and you absolutely need to set up your LinkedIn profile with all the relevant information that you need in order to land your job. And that actually leads us to the seventh step. So the seventh step that you go through is actually submitting for jobs. So I mean, for beginners, what you could start with is actually cold email. So if you have like a company XYZ in your mind and you want to just go with this company, you send an email, say, hi, I'm a developer, I work on this and this, and I share my portfolio, maybe you could actually get an interview out of it. Or what's better, you can go for those like, you know, jobs platforms like Indeed or Classdoor, and you can submit for jobs. You can have your resume, your portfolio set up with all the technologies and like your experience and what you've worked with, and actually submit easily for jobs and you can have a higher chance because now you have a portfolio, you have actually all you need to land your first job. There's actually a really nice, awesome website that a lot of people don't know is actually called a remote okay which i you can find literally a lot of remote jobs for you so you can like start with as a beginner and i find like a lot of people were able to find their job from this website only by sending emails or sending cold emails or the other platform that a lot of people like ignore which is linkedin yes linkedin is super important for you as a newbie developer to do networking connect with other people in your field you know share messages back and forth have you know, kind of quick conversation comments, just be active on LinkedIn. I find a lot of people got the first jobs and they got like really good opportunities just from being active and networking on LinkedIn. Okay, so we reached the last step, which is acing the interview and landing your first job. Yes, this would be a dream for a lot of people, but yep, it is actually 100% possible for you as a beginner. So when you talk about interviews, you obviously want to learn a lot and actually prepare for those interviews before going into the actual interview. So you want to go with something like lead code solutions or hacker runs, where you go with different exercises and learning algorithms and different data structures. And you want to both focus on the hard skills and the soft skills before jumping into that job interview. And for me, there's actually plenty of places to learn online from learning your job. Uh, so one of them, obviously lead code and, and solving problems in lead code hacker rank and the most important for one for me is actually going with the github repository called the vtech interview handbook which literally gives you everything it even has a website it actually gives you all the steps and how you want to prepare for like an interview what are the skills that you need to acquire before giving interview it gives you all the algorithms data structures and problems that you need to solve it's it's pretty damn nice and there's actually another one that's called the coding interview in university and this is actually a way much more than a github repository it basically gives you a full plan like a university 
university plan to start from zero into learning your first job from going into like how to study how to learn to code courses that you're going to go through and even like the interview process that you need to go through and how to prepare for it properly before going into the interview and in order to be able to land there's actually plenty of them out there and plenty of resources from coding tutorials courses free stuff paid stuff and you should be able to know exactly where you're heading in order to be able to be like search google and have those stuff and actually learn from so always always whenever you try to become a developer or software engineer in a specific field always put a plan follow a roadmap and actually know exactly where you're heading in order to reach there even faster so anyway guys thank you guys for watching i really hope you guys enjoyed this one and i hope you guys learn from this tutorial and actually have all the steps you need to start from a complete beginner and land your first job as soon as possible